Good morning. Good morning to Nobel Forum and this press conference for the announcement of this year's Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. My name is Thomas Perlman and I'm the secretary of the Nobel Assembly. I will first read the announcement in Swedish followed by English and we will then present some background uh, to the prize and open up for questions. Nobelförsamlingen vid Karolinska institutet har idag beslutat att Nobelpriset i fysiologi eller medicin år 2017 ska delas lika mellan Jeffrey C. Hall, Michael Rosbach och Michael W. Young för deras upptäckter av molekylära mekanismer som styr cirkadisk rytm. The Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institutet has today decided to award the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine jointly to Jeffrey C. Hall, Michael Rosbach and Michael W. Young for their discoveries on molecular mechanisms controlling the circadian rhythm. Here are the three laureates. Jeffrey Hall was born in New York and performed his seminal work at Brandeis University. He's now retired and lives in Cambridge in Boston. Michael Rosbach is, was born in Oklahoma City and performed his prize-winning studies also at Brandeis University, where he's still on the faculty. And finally, Michael Young was born in Miami and did his work at Rockefeller University in New York, where, he's all, where he also remains on the faculty. I will now describe the discoveries behind this year's award. So this year's prize concerns the circadian rhythm. The word circadian originates from the Latin word circa, meaning around, and dies, meaning day. But in a way, it is actually about astronomy. Ever since the emergence of life on Earth, about four billion years ago, evolving life forms had to adapt to the rotation of our planet. This ability to prepare for the regular daily fluctuations is crucial for all life forms. But how is this possible? This year's Nobel laureates have been studying this fundamental problem and solved the mystery of how an inner clock in most of our cells in our bodies can anticipate daily fluctuations between night and day to optimize our behavior and physiology. This existence of an inner clock was first described already in the 18th century. The French astronomer de Meran studied the mimosa plant that opens its leaves towards the sun during day but closes at dusk. De Meran asked what would happen if the plant was exposed to exposed to constant darkness. And he found that even then, for several days, the leaves continued to follow their regular 24-hour daily rhythm. In the 20th century, it was established that also other plants and animals, including rodents and humans, have their own biological clocks following the daily circadian rhythm. Studies of the clock in fruit flies show that many different behaviors are controlled by the clock. Fruit flies are really excellent model organisms for studies of genetics. And in the 1970s, a mutation that affected the fly's daily rhythm was identified. The mutated locus was called period. But how did the mutation affect the internal clock? This year's laureates they wish to peek inside the clock and figure out how it actually works. A first breakthrough came in 1984 when Jeff Hall, in collaboration with Michael Rosbach and Michael Young working independently, were able to isolate the period gene. Now the scientists could begin to disentangle the cellular wheels and cogs of a clock machinery. Jeff Hall and Michael Rosbach showed that the period protein itself was cycling and peaked during night and was low during day. 
In 1990, they showed that the period mRNA also oscillated, as shown on this slide, and accumulated several hours before the period protein. These and other important observations led to a brilliant idea for how the clock works by a feedback control mechanism. The idea was shown to be correct, and in the next few slides, I will show how it actually works. When the period gene is active, period mRNA is made. The period mRNA is transported to the cell's cytoplasm where period protein is made. When period protein accumulates, the protein moves into the cell's nucleus where it blocks the activity of its own gene. When the gene is blocked, no more RNA can be made. Period protein levels will decrease and the gene will no longer be blocked. And the production of mRNA can start all over again and the cycle can continue. But it remained unclear how the period protein could accumulate in the nucleus to inhibit the gene. This problem was solved when Michael Young discovered a second gene called timeless that is also critical for the clock. This is shown in this experiment. The top diagram shows how period mRNA is cycling over several days in normal flies. The bottom diagram shows that the cycling was disrupted when the timeless gene had been inactivated. But how did the timeless protein affect the period gene? Additional experiments show that timeless protein bound to the period protein and together they entered the cell nucleus where they could inhibit the period gene. It was also critical to understand how the speed of the oscillations can be controlled. Michael Young identified yet another protein called double time or DBT. This protein was shown to slow down the, uh, the accumulation of the period protein which explained how the oscillation can be adjusted to more closely match a 24-hour cycle. Jeff Hall and Michael Rosbach showed that two additional proteins, clock and cycle, activated the period gene in fruit flies. So, with all these groundbreaking discoveries by the three laureates, an elegant feedback control mechanism for the biological clock had finally been unraveled. We now recognize that biological clocks function by these same principles in other animals, including in ourselves, in humans. Most of our cells in our bodies have these clocks. Our inner clock adapts our physiology to the dramatically different phases of the day and regulates many critical functions such as behavior, hormone levels, sleep, body temperature, and metabolism. We do not feel well when there is a temporary mismatch between our external environment and the internal biological clock, for example, when we experience jet lag. Studies have also indicated that chronic misalignment between our lifestyles and the clock is associated with increased risk for various diseases. Since the paradigm shifting discoveries by Hall, Rosbach, and Young Circadian biology has developed into a highly dynamic research field with vast implications for our health and well-being. Here they are again, Jeffrey Hall, Michael Rosbach, and Michael Young. This is the end of the presentation, and I would now wish to present our expert panel, who would be happy to respond if there are questions. So, uh, at the far end, we have Professor Julien Sirat, who is a member of the Nobel Committee. In center, we have uh, Anna Wedell, who is uh, the chair of the Nobel Committee. And on her side, we have uh, Professor Carlos Ibanez, who is also a member of the Nobel Committee. So please, if there are any questions, please go ahead.
There must be at least one question. Okay, please go ahead. We, we are usually not afraid of calling them uh, about this. And uh, I was able to get hold of Michael Rosbach and Jeffrey Hall, but I haven't reached uh, Michael Young. So they just got the news. I first got hold of Michael Rosbach, and he was silent, and then he said, you are kidding me. Is there any other question? Yeah, I'm curious yeah, please go ahead. about the dynamics of this system. So if one were to change the cycle to like six hours instead of 24 hours for humans, for some reason, or chicken, they are being uh, 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 kept in, in very short uh, cycles. What happens with this system? Does it adapt to very short? I think I'll, I'll ask Anna to respond to that question. Well, we know that there are, in rare cases, there are humans who have a little bit altered length of the period, not as you described, six hours, but a little bit shorter, and they get sleep problems. Uh, we don't know of any drastic uh, disruptions in humans of the clock. There are, of course, animal experiments. And in, if you disrupt the clock in animals, you will get effects on metabolism and on various physiologic parameters. But in humans, it's not really possible to do those kinds of experiments. But are there any treatments or possible treatments for, um, uh, for uh, s sleep disorders that could be based on this? Uh well, an obvious answer would be uh, melatonin, which is a hormone that is uh, secreted before we go to sleep. And that it can also be used to, uh, f for those kinds of problems. And some people even use it for jet lag. Um, and also, if you're blind, for instance, you m your rhythm will still be going, but it will be out of sync with the, or misaligned. It will be free running, since it's, it will not be entrained by light. And then you can use similar compounds to melatonin to try to adjust that. Did you hear me? Here's one mm -hmm. question. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, I'm from uh, uh, Chinese media, uh, Green Post and China Radio International. My understanding of this prize is uh, in physiology, right? So can you tell us uh, how, how long have you, or how did you find them, and uh, what is their contribution to mankind? I didn't hear you, uh, how we found them, and their contribution to I'll them. ask Carlos Ibanez to respond to that question. How we found them. Um, our mechanism is based on nominations from different parts of the academic community and institutions, the universities, other scientists. And then these scientists have been nominated by uh, these other uh, members of the academic community and research community. And then that's how we found them. Uh, our work is directed by the nominations that we get. We are aware of interesting fields, but we can only follow up nominations from the scientific community and uh, then we investigate whether the discoveries merit this prize, and that's how we found them. The contribution to humankind is the discovery of a fundamental mechanism underlying uh, very important aspects of physiology, how our cells can keep time. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Okay, is there, here's one question. I've got uh, one question. Uh, I'm, fr I'm Fred from China's National Xinhua News Agency. Regarding to this year's discovery, uh, do you think uh, this discovery by the scientists uh, uh, can, is, can solve the problems, especially that we encounter in the Nordic countries where you've got long, dark winter days, the people tend to have depression? And uh, is, it, uh, are, uh, is this discovery actually shedding lights to solving the problem, to boost you know, people's energy? Could uh, Julien uh, uh, ask? 
So uh, I guess the, the question was how this discovery might solve the problem of how people cope with extreme um, Dark. changes in darkness or sunlight. Mm -hmm. And I think what it can do is raise awareness to the importance of uh, proper sleep hygiene and the importance of really making certain that we um, allow ourselves to you know, go to bed at a, an hour that's suitable. Um, I guess for many of us, it's around you know, between 10 o'clock or so, even if the sun is shining on midsummer day. And it probably helps us to be aware of the fact that we need to be in a dark environment to get the best sleep. And that we shouldn't be afraid of using our alarm clock, uh, even when it's the darkest times of the year. So I think what it can do is help raise awareness. Okay, is there any else who is interested in ask, uh, answering, asking a question? Is it, is it possible for you to say something about the Det går bra, det går bra. Så att uh, frågor på svenska går bra också. Eller andra språk, om vi klarar det. Ja, alltså det skulle jag föredra att göra i intervju sen, men alltså det handlar ju om en inre biologisk klocka som man har känt till och som går oavsett om det är ljus eller om det är ljust eller mörkt, om det är dag eller natt. Den är inre, den går av sig självt. Den ställs rätt av yttre faktorer som ljus, men den fortsätter att gå och den påverkar väldigt mycket av vår fysiologi. Och de här forskarna har förstått mekanismen för hur den här klockan fungerar i, i våra celler. Klockan finns i nästan alla våra celler i kroppen eh, och är väldigt viktig för väldigt många processer. Okej. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions to ask. I know many of you are looking for interviews, so we can go ahead with that. So with that, I would like to close this conference and thank you all for coming. Thank you.